The Euler angles are three angles introduced by Leonhard Euler to describe the orientation of a rigid body. To describe such an orientation in three-dimensional Euclidean space three parameters are required. They can be given in several ways, Euler angles being one of them. See charts on so for others. Euler angles are also used to describe the orientation of a frame of reference relative to another. They are typically denoted as alpha, beta, gamma, or phi, theta, psi. Euler angles represent a sequence of three elemental rotations, i.e., rotations about the axes of a coordinate system. For instance, a first rotation about Z by an angle alpha, a second rotation about X by an angle beta, and a last rotation again about Z by an angle gamma. These rotations start from a known standard orientation. In physics, this standard initial orientation is typically represented by a motionless coordinate system, in linear algebra, by a standard basis. Any orientation can be achieved by composing three elemental rotations. The elemental rotations can either occur about the axes of the fixed coordinate system or about the axes of a rotating coordinate system, which is initially aligned with the fixed one, and modifies its orientation after each elemental rotation. The rotating coordinate system may be imagined to be rigidly attached to a rigid body. In this case, it is sometimes called the local coordinate system, without considering the possibility of using two different conventions for the definition of the rotation axis. There exist 12 possible sequences of rotation axes, divided in two groups. Proper Euler angles. Tate-Bryant angles. Tate-Bryant angles are also called Cardan angles, nautical angles, heading, elevation, and bank, or yaw, pitch, and roll. Sometimes, both kinds of sequences are called Euler angles. In that case, the sequences of the first group are called proper or classic Euler angles. Proper Euler angles Classic definition Euler angles are a means of representing the spatial orientation of any reference frame as a composition of three elemental rotations starting from a known standard orientation, represented by another frame. The reference orientation can be imagined to be an initial orientation from which the frame virtually rotates to reach its actual orientation. In the following, the axes of the original frame are denoted as x, y, z and the axes of the rotated frame are denoted as x, y, z. In geometry and physics, the rotated coordinate system is often imagined to be rigidly attached to a rigid body. In this case, it is called the local coordinate system, and it is meant to represent both the position and the orientation of the body. The geometrical definition of the Euler angles is based on the axes of the above-mentioned reference frames and an additional axis called the line of nodes. The line of nodes is defined as the intersection of the xy and the xy coordinate planes. In other words, it is a line passing through the common origin of both frames, and perpendicular to the ZZ plane, on which both Z and Z lie. The three Euler angles are defined as follows. Alpha is the angle between the x-axis and the n-axis. Beta is the angle between the z-axis and the z-axis. Gamma is the angle between the n-axis and the x-axis. This definition implies that alpha represents a rotation around the z-axis. Beta represents a rotation around the n-axis. Gamma represents a rotation around the z-axis. If beta is zero, there is no rotation about n. As a consequence, z coincides with z. Alpha and gamma represent rotations about the same axis. And the final orientation can be obtained with a single rotation about z by an angle equal to alpha plus gamma. Alternative definition The rotated frame xyz may be imagined to be initially aligned with xyz before undergoing the three elemental rotations represented by Euler angles. Its successive orientations may be denoted as follows. 
x y z or x zero y zero z zero x y z or x one y one z one x y z or x two y two z two x y z or x three y three z three for the above listed sequence of rotations, the line of nodes N can be simply defined as the orientation of X after the first elemental rotation. Hence, N can be simply denoted X. Moreover, since the third elemental rotation occurs about Z, it does not change the orientation of Z. Hence, Z coincides with Z. This allows us to simplify the definition of the Euler angles as follows. Alpha represents a rotation around the z-axis. Beta represents a rotation around the x-axis. Gamma represents a rotation around the z-axis. Conventions Different authors may use different sets of rotation axes to define Euler angles, or different names for the same angles. Therefore any discussion employing Euler angles should always be preceded by their definition. Unless otherwise stated, this article will use the convention described above. The three elemental rotations may occur either about the axes x, y, z of the original coordinate system, which is assumed to remain motionless, or about the axes of the rotating coordinate system x, y, z, which changes its orientation after each elemental rotation. The definition above uses intrinsic rotations. There are six possibilities of choosing the rotation axes for proper Euler angles. In all of them, the first and third rotation axes are the same. The six possible sequences are ZX, Z, or ZX, Z, XY, X, or XY, X, Y, Z, Y, or Y, Z, Y, Z, Y, Z, or Z, Y, Z, X, Z, X, or X, Z, X. Y X Y or Y X Y. Euler angles between two reference frames are defined only if both frames have the same handedness. Signs and ranges angles are commonly defined according to the right hand rule, namely, they have positive values when they represent a rotation that appears clockwise when looking in the positive direction of the axis, and negative values when the rotation appears counterclockwise. The opposite convention is less frequently adopted. About the ranges. For alpha and gamma, the range is defined modulo 2 pi radians. A valid range could be minus pi pi. For beta, the range covers pi radians. For example, could be 0 pi or minus pi 2 pi 2. The angles alpha, beta and gamma are uniquely determined except for the singular case that the xy and the xy planes are identical, the z-axis and the z-axis having the same or opposite directions. Indeed, if the z-axis and the z-axis are the same, beta equals zero and only is uniquely defined, and, similarly, if the z-axis and the z-axis are opposite, beta equals pi and only is uniquely defined. These ambiguities are known as gimbal lock-in applications. Geometric derivation The fastest way to get the Euler angles of a given frame is to write the three given vectors as columns of a matrix and compare it with the expression of the theoretical matrix. Hence the three Euler angles can be calculated. Nevertheless, the same result can be reached avoiding matrix algebra, which is more geometrical. Assuming a frame with unit vectors is in the main diagram, it can be seen that, and, since we have as is the double projection of a unitary vector, there is a similar construction for projecting it first over the plane defined by the axis Z and the line of nodes. As the angle between the planes is and this leads to, and finally, using the inverse cosine function. It is interesting to note that the inverse cosine function yields two possible values for the argument. In this geometrical description only one of the solutions is valid. When Euler angles are defined as a sequence of rotations, all the solutions can be valid, but there will be only one inside the angle ranges. This is because the sequence of rotations to reach the target frame is not unique if the ranges are not previously defined. For computational purposes, it may be useful to represent the angles using at and to. Tate-Briand angles.
The second type of formalism is called Tate-Bryan angles, after Peter Guthrie Tate and George H. Bryan. The definitions and notations used for Tate-Bryan angles are similar to those described above for proper Euler angles. The only difference is that Tate-Bryan angles represent rotations about three distinct axes, while proper Euler angles use the same axis for both the first and third elemental rotations. This implies a different definition for the line of nodes. In the first case, it was defined as the intersection between two homologous Cartesian planes. In the second one, it is defined as the intersection of two non-homologous planes. Conventions The three elemental rotations may occur either about the axis of the original coordinate system, which remains motionless, or about the axis of the rotating coordinate system, which changes its orientation after each elemental rotation. There are six possibilities of choosing the rotation axis for tate bryan angles. The six possible sequences are x, y, z, or x, y, z, y, z, x, or y, z, x, z, x, y, or z, x, y, x, z, y, or x, z, y, z, y, x, or z, y, x. The intrinsic rotations are known as your pitch and roll, yx, z, or yx, z. Alternative names Tate Bryan angles, following z, y, x convention, are also known as nautical angles, because they can be used to describe the orientation of a ship or aircraft, or cardan angles. After the Italian mathematician and physicist Gerolamo Cardano, who first described in detail the cardan suspension and the cardan joint, they are also called heading, elevation and bank, or your, pitch and roll. Notice that the second set of terms is also used for the three aircraft principal axes. Relationship with physical motions. Intrinsic rotations. Intrinsic rotations are elemental rotations that occur about the axis of the rotating coordinate system x, y, z, which changes its orientation after each elemental rotation. The XYZ system rotates while XYZ is fixed. Starting with XYZ overlapping XYZ, a composition of three intrinsic rotations can be used to reach any target orientation for XYZ. The Euler or Tate Bryan angles are the amplitudes of these elemental rotations. For instance, the target orientation can be reached as follows. The XYZ system rotates by alpha about the Z axis. The X axis now lies on the line of nodes. The XYZ system rotates about the now rotated X axis by beta. The Z axis is now in its final orientation, and the X axis remains on the line of nodes. The XYZ system rotates a third time about the new Z axis by gamma. The above-mentioned notation allows us to summarize this as follows. The three elemental rotations of the XYZ system occur about Z, X, and Z. Indeed, this sequence is often denoted Z, X, Z. Sets of rotation axes associated with both proper Euler angles and Tate-Bryan angles are commonly named using this notation. Sometimes, the same sequence is simply called ZXZ, ZXZ, or 3, 1, 3, but this notation may be ambiguous as it may be identical to that used for extrinsic rotations. In this case, it becomes necessary to separately specify whether the rotations are intrinsic or extrinsic. Rotation matrices can be used to represent a sequence of intrinsic rotations. For instance, represents a composition of intrinsic rotations about axes x, y, z, if used to pre-multiply column vectors, while represents exactly the same composition when used to post-multiply row vectors. See ambiguities in the definition of rotation matrices for more details. Extrinsic rotations Extrinsic rotations are elemental rotations that occur about the axis of the fixed coordinate system x, y, z. The x, y, z system rotates while x, y, z is fixed. Starting with x, y, z overlapping x, y, z, a composition of three extrinsic rotations can be used to reach any target orientation for x, y, z.
The Euler rotate Brian angles are the amplitudes of these elemental rotations. For instance, the target orientation can be reached as follows. The XYZ system rotates about the Z axis by alpha. The X axis is now at angle alpha with respect to the X axis. The XYZ system rotates again about the X axis by beta. The Z axis is now at angle beta with respect to the Z axis. The XYZ system rotates a third time about the Z axis by gamma. In sum, the three elemental rotations occur about Z, X and Z. Indeed, this sequence is often denoted ZXZ. Sets of rotation axes associated with both proper Euler angles and Tate-Brian angles are commonly named using this notation. Rotation matrices can be used to represent a sequence of extrinsic rotations. For instance, represents a composition of extrinsic rotations about axes x, y, z, if used to pre-multiply column vectors, while represents exactly the same composition when used to post-multiply row vectors. See ambiguities in the definition of rotation matrices for more details. Conversion between intrinsic and extrinsic rotations Any extrinsic rotation is equivalent to an intrinsic rotation by the same angles but with inverted order of elemental rotations, and vice versa. For instance, the intrinsic rotations x, y, z by angles alpha, beta, gamma are equivalent to the extrinsic rotations z, y, x by angles gamma, beta, alpha. Both are represented by a matrix if R is used to pre-multiply column vectors, and by a matrix if R is used to post-multiply row vectors. See ambiguities in the definition of rotation matrices for more details. The proof of the conversion in the pre-multiply case the rotation matrix of the intrinsic rotation sequence x, y, z can be obtained by the sequential intrinsic element rotations from the right to the left. In this process there are three frames related in the intrinsic rotation sequence. Let's denote the frame 0 as the initial frame, the frame 1 after the first rotation around the x-axis, the frame 2 after the second rotation around the y-axis and the frame 3 as the third rotation around z-axis. Since a rotation matrix can be represented among these three frames, let's use the left shoulder index to denote the representation frame. The following notation means the rotation matrix that transforms the frame A to the frame B and that is represented in the frame C. An intrinsic element rotation matrix represented in that frame where the rotation happens has the same value as that of the corresponding extrinsic element rotation matrix. The intrinsic element rotation matrix Y and Z represented in the frame 0 can be expressed as other forms. The two equations above are substituted to the first equation. Therefore, the rotation matrix of an intrinsic element rotation sequence is the same as that of the inverse extrinsic element rotation sequence. Gimbal motion relationship. Euler basic motions are defined as the movements obtained by changing one of the Euler angles while leaving the other two constant. Euler rotations are never expressed in terms of the external frame or in terms of the co-moving rotated body frame, but in a mixture. They constitute a mixed axis of rotation system, where the first angle moves the line of nodes around the external axis Z. The second rotates around the line of nodes and the third one is an intrinsic rotation around an axis fixed in the body that moves. These rotations are called precession, nutation, and intrinsic rotation. As an example, consider a top. The top spins around its own axis of symmetry. This corresponds to its intrinsic rotation. It also rotates around its pivotal axis, with its center of mass orbiting the pivotal axis. This rotation is a precession. Finally, the top can wobble up and down, the inclination angle is the nutation angle. While all three are rotations when applied over individual frames, only precession is valid as a rotation operator, and only precession can be expressed in general as a matrix in the basis of the space.
Jimville analogy if we suppose a set of frames, able to move each with respect to the former according to just one angle, like a jimble, there will exist an external fixed frame, one final frame and two frames in the middle, which are called intermediate frames. The two in the middle work as two jimble rings that allow the last frame to reach any orientation in space. In these conditions, each Euler rotation works on one of the rings, independently from the rest. Intermediate frames The jimble rings indicate some intermediate frames. They can be defined statically too. Taking some vectors i, j and k over the axes x, y and z, and vectors i, j, k over x, y and z, and a vector n over the line of nodes. Some intermediate frames can be defined using the vector cross product, as following, origin, i, j, k, first, n, k times n, k, second, n, k times n, k, final, i, j, k. These intermediate frames are equivalent to those of the jimbal. They are such that they differ from the previous one in just a single elemental rotation. This proves that, any target frame can be reached from the reference frame just composing three rotations. The values of these three rotations are exactly the Euler angles of the target frame.